I'll go ahead and get started. Um, we kind of had uh, some important discussion, or at least uh, a question brought up, led to, I think, some important uh, announcements uh, since we last met. And I wanted to discuss those again and maybe in more depth. And also because of them, um, I, I uh, have postponed uh, the due date. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be working on your project three, but the due date of project two has been postponed until, uh, until Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. Uh, for those who want to take that time, and that includes if you want to do any, any reshaping of what you've done, whatever, it's up to you. Partly because we probably should have discussed this. We, we got tied up with all the technology. Uh, because of the, the problems I had with uh, not having the software I wanted. Um, and we didn't really talk about the content enough, I don't think. And so uh, I, I, if anybody needs a little more, if any of the teams need a little more time for Project 2, um, you can have until Saturday morning. Um, so uh, this was the, what the, actually the announcement I sent out the other day. Uh, noting that uh, one of you all uh, emailed and said uh, the time limit for assignment two news video story is three to four minutes, but our news sto video story is about 10 minutes. It is because each interviewee takes about 45 seconds to one minute, but it's hard for us to edit our video between three to four minutes. So can our news video be a uh, news story exceed four minutes? And my response was uh, no TV station would ever run this story as anywhere close to 10 minutes. In fact, four minutes might be considered excessive. What they would do is what you should do to achieve the highest grade. One, write uh, into your script more summary. Two, divide your videos into two or three groups reflecting uh, your summaries. Uh, but most importantly, edit your interviews down to sound bites of about 20 seconds per student. That's what the professionals would do. Um, you know, can you do your video over four minutes? And my response is yes, you can. And I can compare all the class videos and determine which are most professional. I will grade accordingly. So you end in an hour long video if you want to, that doesn't mean you'll get a good grade, right? Um, so one of the, some of the things that uh, we hadn't really talked about um, is make sure that you get your basic information about interviewees. Um, hopefully, uh, not too many of you had a problem with that, but uh, typically, um, when I, I, because I was a public official, I was interviewed quite a bit, and the very first thing they would do is, on video, get me to give my name and ID, whatever information, on video, uh, right up front, because that's something that can be easily edited off but helps prevent any, any uh, problems with uh, uh, forgetting you know, which video goes with which person. And that does happen once in a while, or would happen uh, more often if, if that information was not included uh, right at the start of, of every uh, video. So um, again, you would anticipate editing that off when you were, were doing, you know, in your final editing process, but just to make sure you don't lose track of which video goes with which, with which person, et cetera. Uh, that should be the very first thing on your video. Um, double check your spelling. Make sure you have that correct. The last thing you want to do, uh, whether it's video reporting or, or uh, print reporting, is to get somebody's name wrong. Uh, that makes you, I mean, that can, that's a fireable offense. It's a very small thing, but that can get you fired. Uh, if you're not careful enough with the news to get somebody's name um, spelled properly, then uh, a lot of people would not want you on their premises. Uh, you, you need to be careful with that sort of thing. And the same thing with uh, ID information. When I say ID information, I'm talking about um, if you're in the professional world, it'd be like their position, uh, if they're a government official, what their official title is. And be sure to get that correct. There are things that are not um, 
that may you may think is correct and it may be okay but it's not not quite correct uh, like a country might have a prime minister or a president and they're not the same thing uh, here on campus there are uh, instructors, senior instructors, assistant professors, uh, associate professors, and full professors. Uh, while I personally don't care that I'm a full professor and I'm not going to be insulted if you call me an instructor, that is actually a formal title, uh, one or the other, uh, what, what a person is. So uh, I, I tend not to think you know, too much about it uh, that, that if you call that everybody in a sense is an instructor. And so in a generic sense, everybody's an instructor. And indeed, to the average person, everybody who's an instructor at a college is a professor. But that's not really true. And so be careful about titles, uh, whether, you know, wherever you're at. Uh, titles do matter more to some people than to others, but they, they do matter. And uh, so you need to be careful with those. Now kind of returning to and putting into bullet form, some of the keys uh, that, that I'm calling here, you know, just to, you know, begin with the end of mind as you go into a story like this. So particularly now that you're, I mean, you, you may, this may help you to make some revisions in project two, but if not, as you look forward to project three, where you're doing this individually, um, you know, think about, you know, consider the length of your story, consider the number of interviewees, and thus you have to then consider the length of the interview interviews. As you think about that, then there are other questions that come up. Um, and so first off, uh, where is the best place to conduct the interviews? Uh, what should be the backdrop? I looked at uh, some of your interviews and they, you chose good places. There, there's interesting backdrops, uh, whether in front of a building or in front of some a uh, nice place within a building. Um, so I haven't seen anybody do anything particularly bad in that respect, but it is important to think about the backdrop. Uh, think about your interview in advance and how you will use the video. And so again, that kind of goes back to that number one bullet is, is how the, is this video going to be used um, because uh, it makes all the difference in the world. So going on the next bullet, do you want to, to do you want to be in every video shot? So you, the reporter I'm referring to here, do you want to be in every video shot? Some of you uh, had yourselves in every shot. And there's um, there's pros and cons to that, but it, it also relates to how you're going to use the video. Uh, would you want close-ups of some or all of the interviewees? How much focus on the interviewees? How much focus on the interviewer? And that relates to the next bullet item which is the shorter the interview clips, the more the camera focuses on the interviewee. So if you're uh, interviewing 10 people for a four minute video, you probably need some close-ups um, because they're, you, you're kind of, it, it just tends to allow you to then make your clip shorter if you're not including yourself and if you're not if you're not necessarily including in the question, if you have one primary question and you've introduced and, and your script introduces a question. Um, so in other words, you as the reporter anchor introduce the question, then you don't need to repeat the question. So if you don't need to repeat the question, you don't need to be in the video. But once you get into other than you're the you're the talking head at the start of it. But once you go into the interviews of the people, you don't, it may be one or two shots might be okay with you and an interviewee. But if you're going to include 10, it actually will help you with your editing to focus in well, most of your interview is just right on the, the, the person you're talking to. Uh, because if you're, again, if you're not asking any questions, then why are you in the shot? And so if you're, if you're going to cut it down, if you're going to cut down to a shorter period of time, that's where you want to zoom in on the interviewee. Uh, consider how you will edit the material and avoid short answer questions, uh, except for that basic data at the start. Uh, create questions to achieve appropriate sound bites. Uh, so again, in reviewing uh, some of the, the videos uh, already, that's, that's one of the uh, uh, concerns I had is that I mentioned that you should be prepared with follow-up questions, but they shouldn't uh, you're really best off if you really have one core question and the follow-ups are more 
only as needed. They're only as needed. You have one core question, you see how they answer it. If they have a good answer, you're done. Your, your interviews with that person is done. Now, if you're beginning with the end in mind, you will understand why. <laughs> you know, now that you've tried it, now you understand why is that editing down 10 interviews and making it into a four minute video is hard to do. Therefore, you really need to get it, uh, you really need to entice the interviewees to give you uh, what you want in a short period of time. Uh, and so that means one really key question, open-ended question, um, as I mentioned to, to one person, um, if you're asking what they like about the university, actually leave that fairly open, fairly uh, uh, open-ended in the sense is what is it you like about Shaman University? Uh, what sort of things do you like? So you kind of open it up to more than one thing uh, and, you, and you let them think about it and give you a re response. You should get some sound bites out of that. But if you ask, do you like the clubs? Do you like the food? Do you like, if you start bringing it into small things, then now you've got a problem with editing. Uh, so while all those things could be considered, you're better off with a broader uh, open-ended question and enticing them, wording it in such a way they'll get them to talk a little bit, think about, and maybe mention several things, but to one question. Now, if you get to somebody um, and let's say they, you ask that question, and they say, nothing. You know, what do you like about Shyam? Nothing. Or the other way around, everything. That's not much of a sound bite, right? And so now that's when you then fairly spontaneously have to ask that second, that follow-up question. Oh, well, what do you mean by that? You know, and, and whichever answer they ask, you know, they give or they answer. Well, whatever short uh, answer they gave, now you need to be ready to follow up. So you should think about the follow-up questions. But for, for something like this, you, you really want one broad question that will entice them to talk for, you know, talk for a few seconds, and you can still edit that down. So they might talk, they might talk for a minute to one question if you word it uh, in such a way uh, that entices them to do that. And that's not bad, you know, that you're then back to editing. But if you have um, a minute and, and it's all answering one question, it's not too hard to chop that down to 20 seconds, just taking the most important parts of what they said. That's not too bad. But if you've broken already broken up yourself into five questions, now you've got a problem with editing. It's gonna, just going to take more time and going to be kind of hard to do it. Um, so with this sort of a, uh, and again, this is different than, than a lot of interviews you might do in the future, but, uh, on the street sort of interviews, um, there, and, and that also, by the way, goes contrary to uh, some of the examples I sent out to you. If the person in it, for example, there's, uh, uh one of my sent out was by a, a quite famous, um, a Fox TV personality uh, who's a former judge. And uh, and so you see her arguing with the respondents and stuff. Well, you have to understand this is a whole different type of thing. And I put it on there anyway, because I, I thought it was interesting, but now she's putting herself into this story and she can take more than five minutes. She can take 10 minutes. She's in charge of the show. So she can take 10 minutes if he wants, she wants to, because now it's, 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 her interacting with people and arguing with them and all this sort of stuff. So it, it becomes a little different than a normal on the street interview when, when the judge is doing it or when a you know major personality gets involved because now she's becomes part of the story. Um, so I put her on there as, as, a, as an alternative, but it doesn't fit what we're doing. Uh, but it is something that that uh, you know TV stations do sometimes. But then, like I say, it becomes more more uh, uh, personality um, involved with with your your own uh, you know your own staff member. Uh, that's that's pretty rare. But on a national stage, we we have people like that. Um, so consider uh, then how you will edit the material and avoid the short answer questions uh, again. So think about that. 
uh, very carefully before you go into this sort of an interview. Uh, again, beginning with the end in mind. What am I going to come out of this with? Uh, the one thing you did know was how long it was supposed to be. And so you did know that, but you didn't really think about the, most of you didn't think about the consequences of what that meant. To edit down uh, this, you know, 10 interviews into four minutes. Of course, you hadn't experienced it before. Uh, and that's, that's part of why I signed it, was so that you had the opportunity to experience it. There's one thing, one thing I really don't believe in. I don't believe that me coming through a bunch of these talking points um, in week one would have probably done you any good. You probably wouldn't even remember them. But now that you've had a chance to try it, now you can remember, oh yeah, um, how, how do I need to do this sort of an interview? And so there's some things you just can't, you know, inter experience is the best teacher in, in so many uh, ways when, when we're when we're uh, preparing for the profession. Uh, that's why you know, our um, internships are important and any as much practical experience you can get as, a, as classroom assignments or whatever, really important because us talking about it up here just doesn't, doesn't stick. You have to under you have to under, understand it kind of from the inside out from having experienced it. Um, I can help drill it in. I can help emphasize it, and now you know, help you remember what you might have done wrong in, in uh, your first assignment. Uh, how you could do it better. Um, so again, in the scripting, you need uh, uh, you know do you need some to summer, uh, some summary? And yes, you do. Certainly, your your introduction, introductory paragraphs. But if you uh, have quite a few, um, well, if you have some opposing thoughts, then you might need internal summaries as well, especially when you're trying to tighten things up. And uh, especially if you're getting a bunch of short answers you have to deal with. And so then you can say, you know, most of the interviewees, da 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 da. So you can, you can summarize a bunch of short answers uh, that you may find important for your story but as sound bites, they weren't very good sound bites. And so you can kind of eliminate them as sound bites, but summarize them uh, in, in the, the script that you'll use as the anchor person or reporter. And, uh, and then again, if you have you know, several different perspectives, then you, can, you might have internal summaries to introduce. And again, once you summarize something, now maybe all you need is a 10 second sound bite for some people because you've already told the, the listener uh, what they said, in essence, the summary of what they said. And so sound bite, sound bite, sound bite, you can go through, um, you can go through three respondents in 30 seconds, uh, just with a real quick sound bite, uh, if you need to, if you want to. Um, and then how might you, so that's the, the last one then, is how might you organize uh, interviews in order to prepare summary leads lead-ins to for similar responses. So that's, that's both to help create transition, but it's also help you to help you uh, cut down your sound bites. Uh, again, if you if you've summarized it, you know these people like shaman because of uh, you know the great uh, interaction with other students. You know these students are not so so sure that it's meeting their needs, and so you know you go into their sound bites. You know, whatever you're just doing some internal summaries before you get into it and then you can edit the the video tighter uh, because you've already told them what they essentially what they said now you have tight 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 video um, to you know provide uh, evidence that you what you told them is true um, I wanted to go ahead and maybe look at a few of these um, and we can talk about them the first one I think is the uh, oops And you go out of here in order to click on it. Oh, that's the same place. In fact, I should 